Hello, and welcome to the latest instalment of Baxicam. Now Zaheer has been in touch, and he's left a comment on one of our YouTube videos, and he wants to know how you test the spark generator. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this one, mate. So for those of you that have been on the three day course with us here at Baxi, you might have been lucky enough to bag yourself one of these little fellas, which is a spark tester. So what you can do is pull the spark electrode lead off the back of your ignition electrode, bung that on the back there. Now grab your spark lead and bung him on the back of your spark tester. If you turn the boiler on and put a heating or a hot water demand on, then hopefully that little fella should start flashing up red. If it does flash up red, your spark generator is doing the business for you. Now if you're not lucky enough to have one of these, or it's not flashing up red, there's another way of testing a spark generator, and that's with a multimeter. So we class the spark generator as a working component. So in order for it to do some work, we're gonna to have to send some voltage to it. And we can also check the resistance of it as well with our multimeters. So enough talking, let's get to it. Okay then, so here, we'll make a start, mate. So if you think you've got an issue with the spark generator, especially on one of these boilers, you're gonna get the fault code of E133. If we have a look down here, it says E133 is a gas supply fault. So before you go diving in and taking the covers off, what I'd personally do, hold them in reset and let go. And just see how far he gets on his sequence of operation. So what I'm gonna need to do, just to uh, hurry it along a bit, is pop a hot water demand on. There we go, so a green light's on the tap there. So I can hear the fan running. Now shortly after the fan runs, I'll be expecting it to spark. I don't know about you mate, but I can't hear it sparking. So I'm instantly thinking, maybe I've got an issue with the generator on this one. Like I said before, the generator is classed as a working component. Now in order for it to work, the circuit board needs to send voltage to it. And we could also check the resistance of it as well. So I'll give it three or four times and he'll lock himself out on E133. Here he is, E133. I can knock that tap off now. So I've already done my electrical safe isolation. My earth continuity, short circuit and resistance to earth are good. And I've also checked the polarity as well. So I know all my polarity readings are correct. So if I just turn the boiler off from here now, because what I want to be doing first is measuring the resistance of that spark generator. And uh, when we're measuring in resistance, we set our multimeter to the ohm scale with the power turned off. So the spark generator on this boiler itself is that pretty green one at the top of the boiler there. Okay, so if I grab my multimeter, and set him onto the ohm scale, like so. Right, if I remove the plug there, then what I'll be able to do is go across them two pins there and I should be getting a resistance reading. Now the resistance of that generator is three million ohms, or three mega ohms, which you'd be able to find by phoning tech support, or if you've been on one of our uh, training days in the past, uh, you would have got one of our engineer manuals that will tell you that. Now it is important to, uh, to kind of get to know your multimeter as well, because some multimeters, they only go up to two million ohms. So if you're trying to get a reading of three million ohms, your multimeter is going to show you that reading there. But this multimeter, as far as we're aware, reads up to 40 million. So I should be able to get some resistance on this. So I'll go across them two pins there, and you'll see the resistance I've got. It's open line. Okay, so I'm already thinking, okay, so I've got an issue with my spark generator because it should be 3 million, but I've got open line instead. What I need to confirm as well is that I've got power going to the spark generator. Like I said before, the power ultimately comes from the printed circuit board. Okay, so I'm gonna have to turn the power on to the boiler and we're gonna set our multimeter to volts DC. Now DC is the flat line because it's uh, direct current. It's flat and it's smooth. So let's pop my multimeter down there. Grab a screwdriver, undo these two screws. So you'll be able to get the, uh, the wiring diagram online on Parts Arena, 
which should show you where the connections for the spark generator are. But I'd be able to tell you that it's the brown wire there on the right and the end blue one on plug X2. Okay, so we want to, with our multimeter probe, we want to go um, red to positive, so red to brown and the, the black to the, the blue. Now, a reading of anything around 110 volts DC is a good reading for that. So, let's see what we've got. Uh, just uh, set the multimeter up, we're already on volts DC. I need the power turned on. So let's reset him because he, he locked out previously on E133. Oh yeah, look, the fan's running. So it's going to be a flash voltage as well. It's not going to be something that you're going to see all the time. So as soon as the fan runs, I'd be expecting, like I say, anything over 100 volts DC to flash up. There you go, 152.9. And it's gone. Okay, it's going to have another go. So there's my probes there, like I say, red to positive. Back to negative. I'm trying again. There he is. 152 volts DC. Okay, so I know my circuit board is sending power to the generator. I also know that the resistance of the generator is open line. So there can only be one problem with this, and it is the generator. So if you replace the generator on that as a here, you'll find you fixed the boiler mate. So guys and girls, I hope your families are doing well and you're all staying safe. Until next time, take care.